All right, welcome to the program, All Outdoors with Muck Simons. I want to welcome my co-host Darren Wandy back. Darren took the last uh, program off. Uh, tonight we got a special guest, uh, a friend of the program, a guy that's joined in every time we've had a, a an episode, always sits in the back, has good questions for our guests. Uh, I want to introduce Bobby Cherpuschuk. He's a, uh, he's a disabled hunter, and he has a great story. He... Uh, he uh, help change some legislation in the province for people that are that are disabled and so we're going to talk about that tonight and uh people that don't know bobby well i think a lot of people know bobby he's the outfitter with cabela's regina he wheels himself around there he's very knowledgeable in the products there so uh, we figured it would be a, a great opportunity to bring bobby in with the new changes to the legislation and the provincial legislations for the in the firearms uh and the hunting rigs uh as well as he's a great outdoorsman. I've taken him on a hunt. And uh, Darren, of course, this fits in with what you guys have there at the Parkland Outdoor Show and Expo with your access to the outdoors. Uh, I know Bobby was a recipient of one of your, of one of your uh, hunts, so we're gonna, we'll talk about that. But welcome back, Darren, and welcome, Bobby. Hey, Bobby, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of your background, uh, how you became in a chair and then how you became a hunter and stuff like that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the legislation and that in a few minutes. Yeah, for sure. So I'm 32 years old. I was born with spina bifida. And basically what that means is when I was born, I was born with a hole in my back and uh, it caused nerve damage to my lower uh, body. And so basically I have limited function from the hips down. And because of that, it, makes it hard for me to walk and so I, I use a wheelchair to get around for the most part um i, I can climb stairs and then uh walk from the tailgate of my truck up to the front when i get in and out and get into my wheelchair and uh i started hunting when i was uh 12 going on 13 i took my hunter safety course and then uh just when this when the hunter safety course ended for the year uh I couldn't go for that first season just because it was too close to the season. So I had to wait until the next year to be able to go. And um, I grew up listening to hunting stories from coworkers of my dad's and they would always share their uh, deer sausage or bear sausage or moose or elk or whatever they, whatever they harvested that year. And I kind of got sick of just hearing the stories. I wanted to hear, experience it all for myself. So I, told mom and dad when I turned 13 that I wanted to take my hunter safety course and uh, so I took it and from that day on and never really looked back and that was uh, 19 years ago this year that I started hunting and then um, over the years I shot a few whitetail and mule deer and uh, then I started with pheasants when I won the access to the outdoors program pheasant hunt in 2018 and then I went with muck here what two years ago actually that same uh, fall and we went for a Canada goose hunt and I had a blast and basically added to my love of hunting I, I wanted to try waterfowl for a few years before that and um I just really enjoyed it. So I kind of got into it even more last year, went on a couple hunts and hope to get more into it this year. So Bobby, the, probably the, the most common question you probably get because you're in a chair is like, how do you manage to get around? And, and, and we will talk about the, the new legislation, your new adventure in a bit, but up until this point, how did you get around or how did you hunt? Did, you, did we lose Bobby? Yeah, I you froze there for a minute, but I'm back. Okay, did you did you get the question there? No, I you basically uh, I can't remember where it froze, but okay. it froze there for about ten seconds. So, leaving what you're doing now, yep. uh, just to up to the side, uh, what? How did you get around before, and how did you hunt before? up until this point like like uh, it had to have been difficult oh yeah for sure so right from the day i started hunting 
20 years ago there, I always got a permit through the Saskatchewan Wildlife uh, Ministry, and uh, I was able to shoot from my truck. So, and then over the last, I'm going to say three, four, maybe five years, I kind of started seeing these uh, motorized wheelchairs on tracks just kind of showing up on Facebook and all over the internet. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to see how or what it would take for me to get one of these chairs and to be able to use it while I was hunting. So I approached uh, the Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation head office in Moose Jaw to see if they would help me out and purchase one of these chairs so I could use it when I went up to Pheasant Point Adventures with the access to the outdoors hunt that I won. And because of the rules uh, at the time, they classified that chair as an ATV. So it applied the same rules as uh, an able-bodied person so I, I couldn't use it down here in the south part of the province because it was farmland, but up in the bush, in the forest area, it, it was no problem. So one night, uh, last fall, I was working and I ran into uh, NDP Trent Watherspoon and I didn't know him from a hole in the ground, so he told me who he was. And right then and there, the wheels started spinning in my head. So I got his contact info and I sent him a huge uh, text message the next day. And I, I said, Trent, this is what I want to do. I've been seeing these wheelchairs um, online and on YouTube, on Facebook, all over the place. I want to be able to use one of these chairs for hunting in the 2020 season. And he didn't even hesitate. He was right on board for, right from day one. And uh, lo and behold, nine months later, we got the rules changed. Uh, there are still some rules that have to be looked at because just kind of, they aren't fair to people like me. Um, like as of right now, how it stands, I can't have a firearm in my hand while I'm driving that chair. So that basically eliminates me from being able to hunt upland birds that are wild instead of just going to a pheasant farm or a game farm of any kind just to shoot them. So what did you do up until this point, until you get this, like, uh, how did, how did you hunt before that? Did you hunt from the truck or what did you do? Yeah, I hunted from the truck uh, just for big game. And then I didn't actually ever hunt birds until 2018 when I won that pheasant hunt. And then, um, so I, I, I did one uh, upland hunt after the the access to the outdoor program, um, and I took a trip with Steve Glode, a really good friend of mine, uh, over to um, Duck Mountain Provincial Forest, and we did a rough grouse hunt. So I just sat in the back of his truck while he drove, and I spotted the birds, and, and I shot three of them. And... Um, and I, I haven't been on an upland and hunt since then, but I've been able to attend a couple of waterfowl hunts that I've really enjoyed. And I, I have hunted from a lay down blind and I've also hunted from a, an A-frame. The A-frame blind is much easier uh, other than I can't shoot straight ahead just because it's basically in my eyesight is where the top of the frame goes. Um, so I can only shoot the birds that are almost straight up, up ahead of me. I, um, you know, anybody who thinks that shooting out of a wheel a wheelchair is 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 having to some advantage of some sort, I, I think is is hugely mistaken. I think many of us that are able body, um, we either don't know or they're not educated enough know to know that that is not an ideal um, spot to hunt from. And with, without the rules even changing, hunting from a vehicle, especially for birds, is not ideal either, right? So I'm glad that um, you were able to, to you know, speak on behalf of uh, disabled um, hunters and outdoors people and, and get the ball rolling with, uh, with members from the Legislative Assembly in Saskatchewan. So hats off to you, Bobby. And, uh, you know, the, the, the wheels of 
the wheels are turning and it looks like things are, are going in the right direction and we need to keep advocating for uh, for that to happen. Yeah. And I haven't really been saying this yet, but I'm very close to getting my own track wheelchair. Nice. Cool. So with that track wheelchair, what, what's a price tag on something like that? Like obviously they're fairly expensive because more people would probably have them, but can you give, can you give uh, the audience kind of an idea of what it looks like to, to purchase one and where do you have to get one? Can you pick one up at Canadian Tire or is it something that's a specialty thing? Kind of give us some background about that and what, what, what kind of actual chair is it and, and how is it built? Yeah, so it, it's basically a motorized wheelchair, like an everyday uh, wheelchair. You see people that can't push a manual wheelchair uh, with a joystick. So, but it, it has like, ATV tracks on it, one on each side. Uh, the chair is uh, 40 inches wide and five feet long. And then it stands um, from the ground to the top of the back rest on the chair is 36 inches. And they weigh about 500 pounds. And they're battery operated. There's two deep cycle batteries in them. Um, and there are at least, from what I can think of at the top of my head, uh, three to four different companies that make them. And so the company that I am looking at purchasing mine from is Action Track Chair. And the model I am looking at is um, the Action Track Chair TR model. And it has a starting price tag of 25000 Wow. Yeah. And... So I did get a quote for my own and it was just shy of 30 with all the accessories that I put on it. So, so Bobby, forgive me. Um, yep. How will this, how will this improve your situation? I mean, obviously you'll be able to move around, but are you still going to need an able body person there with you? Like what if you, what if you shoot a deer with this? Uh, what if you shoot birds? Uh, like, like how, how is, how is this going to improve or not improve your, your hunt, your access to hunting? Yeah. So, um, as of right now, the rules stand, uh, I have to have somebody with me at all times, which I've always had. I, I don't hunt alone. I never have, and I probably never will. Um, and then it'll just get me out and anybody, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing this just for myself. I did this for the whole province. And if anybody hears, that I did this just for myself. Don't believe the, the person that, t that says that to you. Um, I did this for absolutely every disabled outdoors person in the province. Um, yes, these chairs are not very um, financial friendly. They are very expensive. Um, but with lots of fundraising, you can easily get the money for it even though right now with COVID-19 happening, um, it is doable. I am very close to paying the, or getting the full amount to uh, be able to purchase this chair. And they are made in Minnesota, the company that I went through. Um, and it, it would just get me out into places like in the bush. It could get me into little coolies, um, Anywhere that a truck or uh, ETV or side by side couldn't go, because they're they're so narrow, like they're only forty inches wide, and the track is uh, if you cut it and spread it out, it's only ninety inches long. And you can get uh, gas powered ones, but they're going to be probably another five or six thousand dollars on top of that. So this specific chair. Sure. It, it has its own chair or you strap your chair into it? Because I've seen both. Yeah, uh, this one is uh, it has its own seat on it. So I just transfer from my everyday chair onto this one. Would you have to get a specific lift for your vehicle for it? Or a trailer? Uh, they do sell um, a little platform that you can just slide into your receiver hitch on your truck. Uh, and I think they're like a thousand bucks or something like that. But my dad already has a cargo trailer, so we're just going to use that. And it's got the ramp on it. 
so I can just go into due, there. Due to the expense of it, I'm surprised that uh, the province hasn't stepped up and, and located several of these throughout the, throughout the province for, for uh, disabled hunters to use. I just think it's, it, it seems grossly unfair that they're so expensive in order yeah. just to get out, out in the outdoors. Uh, I'm surprised that the, you know, the wildlife federation or even the government hasn't have these more accessible to you, to you, you hunters. Yeah. So like I, I was originally working uh, and planning with Daryl Crabb from the Saskatchewan wildlife federation for them to purchase one of these chairs, at least one, um, possibly one for the Regina district, one for Saskatoon and one for PA. Um, but Daryl was looking into it and the insurance was just stupid. Like they, their insurance companies were saying uh, hun hunters only could be 16 years of age and older and they'd have to take an ETV course in order to use this chair. Mm -hmm. So that, that cut out three years of beginning hunters for the ages. Hey, so, Bobby, how many, how many um, disabled hunters are there in the province? You know what, Mark? I, I wouldn't even begin to, to think. Um, I wouldn't even be able to say a number. I'm thinking a couple hundred for sure. Well, you I know, know you. I'm I not... I'm not trying to single out anybody, but I would like to actually see that um, on an application form. So these these hunters, these disabled hunters, actually had a voice. So yep. you know, if you're filling buying a license, I know they ask you, you know, your gender and yep. ethnicity and stuff. I would I would actually like to see a um, a block on there to, to for people to fill in that you know they're disabled, and that would give the province maybe some some clout of holy man, we've got. X number of hunters that are disabled and maybe we need to start making some of these changes. So, you know, we're not trying to single anybody out by any means, but yeah. you know, the voice has to get out there. And if they don't know the numbers because they're not indicated anywhere, it's pretty right. need that firepower to fight for that. Right. So yeah. I would like to see some changes and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, because obviously you're, you're in that situation. What's your feeling on that? If we're able to declare, you know, the disability and then we can get some numbers and some facts to take back to our politicians and say, Hey, this is where the numbers are of the outdoors people that are out there that are buying licenses that are paying taxes that are doing all these things, but yet they don't have the advantages that they need to be successful in the field. Right. And you know what, Darren, that's a good point. I would love to see a chart that shows how many disabled hunters there are compared to able-bodied hunters like yourself. Um, and just to see those numbers, because who knows, maybe the, those numbers are in the thousands yeah, that's right. or ten thousands. I, I don't know. Or we could get more people out if they have an opportunity to, you know, to be able to use a chair. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. So, so Darren, um, so Darren, what are the things that you guys have at your banquet that uh, has really taken off at least, uh, you know, from people like me that uh, are, are looking at it is your access to the outdoor program. Why don't yeah. you give us a, a kind of a rundown on that? Because that was something that you added after, wasn't it? And yeah, uh, you know, it came a couple of years after we, we started the, um, the program. Uh, it came to us from one of our, our speakers, uh, Rachel Attila is a good friend of the, the, you know, myself and the show. She actually brought it up and she's like, Hey, have you guys ever thought about, um, giving giving an opportunity for um, somebody who's disabled, either an adult or a child or both, um, maybe to get back into the outdoors. Maybe they were active one time and because they're injured, they're not anymore. Or just giving an opportunity for for those people to, to get on board and, and maybe try the outdoors. Um, so we tried it and we had, you know, we had some people step up, a couple outfitters just, just come to mind. We have some new ones now, but just coming to mind like Trevor Sanflavin from Eagle West, um, we had, um, um, Daryl and Green, uh, from, uh, Pheasant Point Adventures. They were the two original ones that come on board in the last couple of years. We've had like Nordic Lodge and stuff come on for, for fishing. Um, but just, uh, you know, getting people, they apply, there's an, uh, application process, they apply online. And then depending on how many spots we have for hunts, we try to hook up, um, somebody with, 
uh, either an adult or a child or even both to be able to go on these adventures. And uh, we have a banquet and we dedicate some, uh, some fundraising from that banquet so for auction to help pay for the expenses of uh, travel and accommodations and, and so forth. And then the people at these lodges were uh, giving us opportunities for, for people with disabilities to come and hunt and fish at their, you know, whatever their lodge was. So that's what we've been doing the last number of years. And, and that's where I've got to know Bobby because he was lucky to win uh, a pheasant hunt at Daryl and Creed there up, up at uh, Pheasant Point Adventures. Uh, he was able to go on a pheasant hunt. And, you know, Bobby, you can speak on behalf of the, of the trip. I, I was there with another, uh, another group. I wasn't there on your trip, but uh, absolutely first class um, for those folks. Definitely look after the clients that they have there and, and uh, just make, a, make a, an ultimate experience for them. So, you know, you can share your experience with that, Bobby, with, uh, with the trip that you had won from us. And if I remember correctly, you also, we also equipped you with some equipment to, to be able to be able on that hunt. I think a shotgun and maybe some clothing. I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but I know a shotgun for sure because you, uh, you bragged it up there. So if you want to just share your experience with that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. No, um, like Darren said, the the experience was second to none. Uh, Daryl and Crean, they're wonderful people. Um, I've known them even before the Parkland show. I actually got to meet them at the uh, Regina Outdoors uh, show and expo um, back in I want to say 2016 I think I met them maybe 15 and uh, met them there and lo and behold they actually offered me a free hunt back then too so that that's how my dad actually got to hunt was I gave him my certificate for that for that weekend and yeah I, I won uh, an over under 20 gauge shotgun for the hunt and um a cooler to bring all my bird meat home when i was done for the weekend and yeah it was just an experience that was just phenomenal i can't thank you enough for everything it was i i, I brag about it at least once a week <laughs> at the store yeah um and i i show people the gun that i won all the time I bet you, I just by word of mouth, I bet you I've sold that gun 10 or 12 times over to different customers. And actually, like, I don't even know if I told you this, Darren, but right when I won the, that hunt, I was just kind of starting to look for a 20-gauge. And I was looking at a Browning, and it was just a little too heavy and a little too big for, for what I wanted. And, like, being in the chair... It just was too hard for me to hold. And then when I, when I started uh, doing skeet shooting over the summer after I won mine, I couldn't believe just how much easier it was to shoot with it being so much lighter. And it, it just fits everybody. Mm -hmm. Like even big guys with long arms, they shoulder it and put their cheek up to it to look down the barrel. And they're like, this is this should be worth way more than eight or nine hundred dollars that the price tag is. Well, you know, Darren, uh, one of the things at the banquet when you and I mean you're busy and and you got lots going on there, but when I'm sitting in the crowd and listening to the stories of Bobby's and and the other recipients of those those trips, uh, I mean it's just it, it's heartwarming. It's amazing that you guys do that. But you know, obviously that that program wouldn't be successful if it wasn't for your outfitters. And those yeah. are the guys that have hearts of gold that, that go out of their way. Uh, I know I just gave an example. Like I took Bobby uh, a year ago or two years ago, uh, uh, goose hunting and Bobby had said he never shot a goose at that point. And to get him into the blind, get him all ready to go. And I mean, he, he knocked down a bunch of geese. It was just heartwarming to see that maybe if it wasn't for like the access to outdoors or people that want to help, I don't, Bobby, would you agree that maybe you might not get that opportunity? Yeah. Um, I'll even for you, Mark, the, the time you guys took out of your day and let me come out for that night was just awesome. It was an experience. Uh, even when you guys were going to take or get the trucks back from the, the road, uh, I didn't have a gun and there was 
30 geese that flew right over top of me, crying out loud. I had no gun, no bullets. I know, you guys took um, everything back to the truck. I know our outfitters, like you said, Muck, they just a heart of gold. And a lot of them have experiences that, um, that pulls in their heartstrings. If it's a child or a, an adult, they had a relative or a brother or, you know, whatever the case may be. They, they go out of their way and, you know, it's, it's clients that, you know, paying clients that could have those spots, but instead they, they open it up for, you know, for our program and, and people like, you know, Bobby, who's, who is disabled and, you know, the other people that have applied. But what the real thing that really strikes me is they've made accommodation to their, to their facilities. You know, I just think of um, the fishing trip that Trevor and, and uh, Phyllis give at uh, Eagle West. Trevor went out of his pocket in his lodge. They went and they made all their docks wheelchair accessible. And that was because of our program. We had a, a young girl that was going in there that has the same situation as Bobby with a spinal bifa and she's in a chair. And uh, he made accommodations to, to have her as his docks all re-retrofitted. Um, and now that's something that he offers at his lodge and he did something special with the boat to be able to load her into the boat and, and do all these different things. And I know Nordic Lodge also did some changes to their lodging. And um, you know, with Daryl and Crean up at, at uh, their pheasant camp, um, he got some, um, uh, I think it was a local uh, ATV dealer, gave them a huge side-by-side -side so they could load stuff in. And everybody just kind of worked together and they made it really con uh, um, uh, just accessible for, for folks that are maybe uh, um, not able to, to get out there and, and, you know, like, you know, the majority of us. But um, it just, it's very heartwarming and, and to see when, when that access to the outdoors comes up. Uh, people bring up their wallets to bid on auction items and make donations. And then, you know, always somebody always comes up and says, Hey, I'll, I like to donate, I like to donate the lures or I'll, I like to donate the, the shotgun shells for that. Or I like the, you know, we have friends who um, are um, dealers or reps for um, fishing rods or, or uh, shotguns or, or whatever. And they, they come forward and say, you know what, I like to donate this and donate that. And it, it's really, um, you know, it, it takes an entire village to, to make it happen. It's not just one person or two people. It's a lot of people pitching in to, to make it worthwhile for people like, um, you know, disability people that are hard time getting around that either have or have not ever taken part. But uh, when they do that and comes together, it, it's, uh, it's quite awesome. Well, you know, Darren and Bobby, well, Darren, and you and I are healthy or somewhat healthy, abled bodies. And, you know, it's, I think lots of times abled hunters lose um, – lose focus a bit when they're worried about how big a trophy they're getting and all that kinds of stuff. When we've got guys like Bobby and another gal that they're just happy to be in the outdoors. And I think sometimes we, we need to hit the reset button and to, and to think about that because I mean, I, I said to Bobby, it was one of the most heartwarming things I could have done for him. I, I, I would have taken him years before that had I known he'd never hunted geese before. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, I just want to help out. Like, uh, so when that comes up at the, at the banquet, you're absolutely right. I think it just tugs on our strings a little bit, sort of, sort of makes us, Hey, you know, we can get around pretty darn good. I don't know what we're worried about. And, and uh, so I, I love that program. I'm a big believer of it. So Bobby, what, uh, what animals or what species have you hunted so far? I've, I've shot two white tail, two mule deer, uh, a few pheasants, uh, a few rough grouse, uh, some Canadas, uh, a couple snow geese, and a few mallards so far. So with this I, legislation I, change and this chair that you're getting, what are you hoping to to get out of that? Like what species are you trying to get out? Or, or is it just to bring the experience even better? Well, so funny you say that, Muck. I was actually drawn this year for a moose tag. Uh, in zone 40 up by Rose Valley uh, between Watson and Wadena and Winyard in that kind of area. And um, so I'm hopefully going, not this coming Friday, but next Friday for my, my moose hunt. And there's a fairly possible chance that my chair will be here. And if your chair isn't there, Bobby, then what? Can you get a permit for an ATV? Uh, no, I'll, I've still got the permit to shoot from my truck and I'm going to be in farmland. So it'll be wide open space. So I'll, I'll be able to shoot from the, the ditch or the side of the field or whatever. 
See, I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me why you weren't allowed a permit for an ATV or side-by-side -side or something like that. And so another thing with this chair permit, it, that permit still doesn't include the use of a quad or a side-by-side. -side. <laughs> it's specifically for that chair only. So, Bobby, tell us about the uh, Facebook page that you got going on there for disability uh, or dis uh, disabled hunters. Yeah, you know what? Funny you brought that up. I uh, almost forgot about that. Uh, back in 2016, I was sitting at the couch one night watching TV, and I'm like, you know, I should start a Facebook group to promote hunting with disabilities. And it was funny thing is the night that I launched it was uh, the same day as my cousin's birthday and so it, it's uh, 306 disabled hunters and I'm a little over a thousand members so far I'd like to grow it but uh, slowly but surely it's creeping up past the thousand people mark and um, it, it's gone really well so far um, I'd, I'd like to see it five 5,000 or more subscribers, but that'll get there someday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know what, Bobby? It's, uh, it's awesome to advocate, and, and um, you know, it, it seems like in the, in the world that we live in now, if you're not speaking up for yourself to advocate, um, there's not many people are going to do that. And, and hats off to um, you know, Trent Witherspoon for, for helping you out and kind of getting your, your message to the government and but I like I say I like to see those numbers and and uh, you know continue to advocate for for that and you know the perm like even looking at the permit side and you know the you know if it's a quad if it's a quad uh, permit that you have to go through to do those steps you know it's about safety but we'd like to see um, you know everybody be able to access that and be able to get out to the outdoors for sure. Yeah. Hey, for sure. hey, hey Bobby, if uh, yeah. somebody's watching this and they want to get a hold of you. To, to find out about the chair and maybe some information or maybe just another disabled hunter that wants to connect with you. Like what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, through Facebook or um, th they can message me on there or add me as a friend or whatever. So I did notice that uh, as of late, you've been doing lots of media stuff. Why don't you tell us about that? That must be exciting. Yeah. So it, yeah, it was geared towards getting all these permits in place to use that wheelchair. Um, I've been on Global News in Regina twice now. Uh, Leader Post has done an article on me. I've spoke with John Gormley uh, from CJME twice. Um, I've been on C uh, CBC Radio once. They've done an article on me on their website. Um, and then I... Not long after the uh, Leader Post article, I, I was informed that the Yorkton newspaper uh, shared my article from the Leader Post and then also the Humboldt newspaper. And then a couple weeks later, I was told that it actually got into BC, nice. one of their newspapers. I, I like to see two things. One, I like to see um, maybe Trent Witherspoon go on, go on that moose hunt with you. Yeah, you know, obviously he's getting it, but maybe somebody that doesn't get it go on that trip to be able to see all the preparation that has to happen, or you know they, you know they, if it's uh and you go to a goose hunt and you have to show all the, all the prep that has to happen or the not being able to access those trails because of the disability I'd like to see somebody there that actually would benefit from seeing that. The other thing I know, uh, Mark, a lot of people that we have uh, chime into our our little podcast or Zoom here. Um, we have a lot of creative people out there, uh, welders, uh, technicians, uh, electricians. You know, if, if there's somebody that we can reach out to through the access that maybe could start building something like this, we have a lot of handy people that uh, are good with the welder and that are technicians. You know, if we could start developing something and maybe the branches at the, the SWF, they're able to sponsor a, a chair that's made here up in Canada. You know, I think that would be yeah. a a great opportunity for that to happen. So getting back to that, Darren, um, it even shows, it says on the application for my permit to use that chair, which I've already gone through and I've got the permit in my truck. Um, 
the chair has to be fabricated by a licensed company. It yep. can't just be a homemade chair, which kind of sucks, but I, I do see their point. Yeah, we have lots of people out there that have fabrication shops that would put their stamp on that, I would imagine. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and so they get, get into the rules about this chair. Um, like I said, the biggest one is I'm basically omitted from being allowed to hunt upland birds because I can't have the firearm in, in my possession while I'm driving the chair. Uh, and then I also have to wear a blaze orange helmet while on the chair. Uh, I have to have a slow moving uh, farm equipment triangle affixed to the back of the chair because the chair only uh, goes five kilometers an hour. Um, I have to hunt with at least one other person, if not a whole party, which doesn't bother me. That's probably the, the least amount of worries that I have because I never hunt alone anyway. Um, what was another one? Hey, Bobby, real quick while you're thinking of that, yep. what exactly did you get changed in the legislation? Like, what was the old legislation? Oh, I think, do we lose them again? No, yeah, I'm back. Um, so basically what they did was they made a permit to allow anybody in my situation to be able to use one of these wheelchairs for hunting. So why can't you carry a gun then? I, that doesn't make sense. It's just one of the rules that they used. I have a feeling they took the rules from you guys being able to hunt from a quad or a side by side. So like you can hunt in the bush with it, but doesn't your gun have to be in a gun boot when you're on the quad? Yeah. So that, yeah, they took those rules from that and with, without even thinking. So I sent a big long email with, three or four points on it saying this has to change this has to change this has to change and this has to change so you can't um, shoot a deer from your chair then i can i have to be stationary i can't be on the move gotcha okay i got you yeah so ba basically as soon as i take my hand off that joystick the chair stops like that like within a second as soon as it loses momentum it stops and so I, I don't see why, especially for upland bird hunting, because can't you guys, when you're walking, have a shell in the, in the chamber? You just can't close the action? Are you talking on, a, on just walking? Yeah. You can have like it loaded. If you're going for pheasants or whatever. Or you can have yeah, one. you can have it loaded. Yeah. Where I can't. Right. So, how, how fair is that? Especially for for upland game birds, you know they're they're swinging they're swinging out. It's pretty tough to to get it ready and stopped. And what well, sounds exactly. like it sounds like they still have some work to do on that because that that I mean it doesn't go far enough because of, for that exact reason. Like if you're if right. If I like, give you an example, if you're looking for pheasant and you're going along the edge of a slough or something like that, it's it's very common to 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 uh, bump a pheasant up. If you can't shoot it, mm -hmm. then what? You know, it's great that you can be there, but if you can't participate, then uh, it it doesn't make sense. Or even if, like, say, if you wanted to cross the field for a whitetail and a whitetail comes out, you can't. If you can't, just pick up and shoot it. I don't like. I definitely see some. Uh, work needs to be done on that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it, the, if you go ahead, Darren. You said the good thing is it it started right. That that's always yeah. The moment you get that wheel started to move, and it, it's yeah. really tough. You're 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 pulling and, and pushing that wheel, and there's no movement, but there's movement, right? right? That's hope, and and right. when you got hope, things can happen with hope, and you can get people on board that can make it happen, right? So. Yeah, and like I. I, I, I see why they did these rules. I'm, I'm thinking it's just because this is the first year it's ever happened. They want to see uh, what this chair can do and all that before they allow 
all these other rules. Yeah, but, fair enough. And I, I said to him, once I get my own chair, I would be more than happy to take a few of the field officers and the office workers out to the field and show them what this chair can do and how safe it is. Um, like, I don't feel I should have to wear a helmet while I'm basically walking because it th this chair has uh, wheelie bars in the front and in the back so it can't tip forward or backwards very very easily at all uh, the only way it'd be able to tip is side to side if it was on uneven enough ground but I don't see anywhere in any place that I've ever hunted other than maybe down south in the Big Muddy, um, where the terrain would be uneven enough for that thing to tip. Yeah, you know, it, it, it definitely, I have, I know nothing about it, but just from the way mm -hmm. you're describing, it definitely sounds like they're, 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 they're sucking over uh, ATV information to that. Mm -hmm. So I I, I've got a video for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. I've got a video that I'll all send to you and uh, it's about 12 minutes long. You can see just how durable and rugged these chairs are and what they can go through. So, Hey, Darren, we're going to, we're winding down here, but if, if there's somebody out there that wants to be part of the access to the outdoors, how, uh, if, if they're, if, if you're looking for donations, like sponsors for gear, stuff like that, how do they get a hold of you to do that? Well, our uh, website's kind of on pause right now with COVID because we had to pause the show last year. But, um, you know, Facebook, uh, my name, Darren Wandy or Parkland Outdoor Show, we have a Facebook page as well. You know, just say you heard about the, the Access to the Outdoor program and you'd like to get involved some way, shape, or form. I know we've got uh, other people that are interested in maybe doing some hunts. There's a, a, bear, a bear lodge I was interested. Um, there's always interest for other fishing groups. So, anything really we're we're willing to work with outfitters uh it's you know it's uh, those people are, are are awesome to work with and they really make accommodations so facebook for myself darren wandy or parkland out there show and expo um or get a hold of you muck and you can pass them my way or bobby through the 306 hunter group um just any way shape or form to, to try to get a hold of us and put your name on the list uh we do have some hunts from last year that we're going to uh, to look at doing again uh, when it was a wild boar hunt uh, that we had kind of lined up ready to go for that and it kind of got put on hold. But um, yeah, any anybody that wants to get involved, we're more than welcome to uh, to do so. And we'd like to work with you. And Bobby, next, uh, I know you got your moose hunt, but what's up? What's up next for you, uh, either with this chair or without the chair? Yeah, uh, well, just the moose hunt and. We better be getting out and slaying some birds this year. Yeah, we definitely got to set something up for you. Well, Bobby, yeah. I uh, appreciate you supporting the show. It's great that we could have you in. Uh, I mean, it just worked out great that that uh, you're a recipient of Darren's access to the outdoors, so you had firsthand knowledge. Uh, Darren, yeah. I mean, you got a heart of gold, man, and like just this example of just one little bit of what the Parkland Outdoor Show it does. Uh, I mean, let's face it, that's how you and I met, uh, lifelong friends. Bobby, thanks again, my friend. Uh, uh, keep supporting the show, and, yeah, we'll get out there and get some geese for you, for sure. Bobby, thanks and for breaking that Just ice. one more quick story. Thanks for breaking that yeah. ice in there. Just one that's more quick thing. story. Yep. Go ahead. We did uh, the, the Regina Fish and Game League, we did our annual pheasant release with Gerald and Crean here back about a month ago. And so both Gerald and Crean come down and met us at the Condi gun range to uh, give each of us our number of birds that we, we could all release. And I'm sitting there waiting for them to load the birds in the back of my truck. And I got both my front driver's doors, windows open. And I'm sitting there just texting, listening to all them talk. And all of a sudden, this freaking hen flies into my truck green threw one in my window <laughs> so she is dead <laughs> next time i see her <laughs> uh you know what daryl and creed two of the nicest humans you'll ever meet 
They've always been big supporters of the show. Uh, they have a heart of gold. Uh, I, you couldn't find two greater people that just love helping other people out. Um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I can't speak uh, enough about how, how awesome they are. I've been there twice to their operation. I'm going again in October. Yeah. And on their YouTube channel actually is my hunt that I was on with them. Okay. Well, Bobby, we're going to let you go. And thanks again, my friend, uh, good luck yeah. with your endeavor. And thank I'm, you know, on behalf of all the other disabled hunters, thank you for kind of stepping up and, and, uh, getting the ball rolling. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see it go farther, but like Darren said, it's a start and, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully moving forward, you guys got full access, uh, as much as you can anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see full range just like you guys have. All right. Good luck, Bobby. And uh, Darren, we'll talk to you soon. You got it. Thanks, everybody.